This is how you can save money on energy bills with low budget insulation foil by My Zero Carbon. The best time to act is now. Please remember to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. In this practical DIY video, I'm going to show you six different ways you can use this low budget triple layer insulation foil to better insulate your home. It will take less than a year until the money you invested in this foil will pay off in energy savings in your bill. But before we go any further, a little bit about this foil. It has three layers with something a bit like bubble wrap in the center with a thin layer of aluminium on either side. It is thin, easy to cut and flexible so great for all kinds of applications. It is only 4 mm thin, but insulates as well as 55 mm of polystyrene. In the UK, the product I bought is called YBS AirTech Reflective Double Insulation. For eBay or web searches, use insulation foil or double foil bubble insulation. You can buy it in rolls between 1 and 1.5 meter wide in quantities between 10 and 30 square meters per roll and it will cost you about £1.70 to £2.70 per square meter. In the US you can buy it by the yard in DIY stores but that can be quite expensive or you can buy large quantities online. Search online for insulation roll double bubble. Expect to pay at least $4 per square meter that is about 40 cent per square foot. Most merchants sell double bubble foil that insulates even better than the typical UK product. And why would you want to insulate your home better? Because it is losing heat to the outside, heat that you paid a lot of money for to produce it in the first place. Project 1. Floor Insulation Why insulate your floor? Because a UK home with a typical gas bill loses about 15% or 240 pounds worth of heat through the floor every year. Tools you will need for this insulation project are a measuring tape, a pair of scissors and a spatula. So if you have time and energy you can insulate your whole ground floor yourself. If you have a room above a garage or a room on the first floor arching above the ground that is worth doing as well as you will have very cold air underneath those rooms. Before you start, it is worth checking that you can easily lift the carpet without damaging it. Okay, now it's time to clear the room. Hoover the carpet and roll it up. Ooh, that feels really quite cool now. I think I better put on my shoes. And now we come to the fun part of this video, which is putting down the foil. A few tips. Cut nice straight lines along the rows of bubbles. Where there is space, shuff the foil underneath the skirting boards with a spatula to make sure to remove any potential gaps where cold air can seep in. For pipes, cut into the foil as you would do for laying carpets. Check under doors and the areas where doors open if you have enough height for the insulation foil and carpet. If not, leave these areas without foil. Avoid kneeling directly on the bubble foil. Kneel on rugs or pieces of polystyrene. All done! And put the carpet back. Ah, that's so much better. Project number two, loft hatch insulation. You will need a staple gun, a pair of scissors and a measuring tape. I looked at my loft hatch, less than one centimeter of polystyrene insulation, that's not enough. To start, measure the size of the loft hatch frame. Cut the foil to size. Use two or three layers of foil for best insulation effect. Staple the foil to the loft hatch with six to eight staples. Job done. Here the job done for a different swing down loft hatch. Project number three, water tank insulation. This is for a water tank in the house. You can apply the same principles to a water tank in the loft. 
you will need a staple gun, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape and some sticky tape. You will also need long strips of the insulation foil, 4-6cm to six centimeters wide. You may already have these from previous projects cutting the foil to size. Ok, so let's have a look inside the airing cupboard. Pretty warm in here, 30 degrees Celsius or 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason is there are lots of pipes in here and most of them are hot to touch. So start with insulating the ceiling and back wall using the staple gun to fix the foil. Then I use all the strips of foil to wind them around the pipes, fixing ends with sticky tape. And that's all done. Project 4. Window insulation. Before you start, you will have some small foil rolls to store. Have a think about where that will be, for example in a room corner or on top of a wardrobe. Why insulate the windows? For the average UK home, each year you lose 10% or 160 pounds worth of heat through the windows. So, using the insulation foil will be especially effective if you have single glazed or double glazed windows. What you'll need is six pieces of Velcro per window, a pair of scissors and one or two pegs per window. Measure the maximum size of the window frame from top to bottom and from left to right. Your foil may not go in a straight line across the window as you have to go over window handles etc. So cut it a bit larger than you think you'll need it. Cut the foil to size. Applying the Velcro. The following seems to work best. Use the hook part of the Velcro, take at least four pieces, remove the cover film and put them in the four corners of the window frame. Place the loop part of the Velcro on top of the hook part and press hard against the window frame. Remove the Velcro backing to expose the sticky layer. Place the insulation foil in the correct position and press against the window frame and the Velcro underneath the foil. Wait for 10 minutes before removing the foil for the first time. From now on, every day, place the foil into the window. When it gets dark, pressing the Velcro down. Every morning, remove and roll up the foil. Fix the roll with one or two washing pegs and place in its daytime location. Project number five, radiator insulation. Why insulate the radiators? Well, the average UK home loses about 35% or 570 pound worth of heat through the walls. So if you haven't already done so, check if you can get your house cavity walls insulated. This may be free or highly subsidized. To improve further and avoid even more heat loss, you need to avoid heat loss from the radiator through the walls. There is an alternative product to what I'm using in this video, made largely from thin polystyrene, but it is more expensive per square meter and it insulates less well, so I can't recommend that alternative product. So, the tools you need for the radiator insulation are a measuring tape, a pair of scissors, a strong glue or adhesive, if your glue comes in a cylinder, a glue gun and a long thin paintbrush or alternatively a long wooden spoon. And also some old newspapers and single-use gloves to protect your skin and the carpet from the strong glue. Place the newspaper under the radiator. Clean the space behind the radiator, for example with the paintbrush. You will need accurate measurements of where the wall fittings are. Cut the foil to size. Cut slots into the foil from the bottom up to, to the place where the radiator fittings sit. Make sure to put any measuring markings on the side facing the wall, that's where the glue goes, not the side facing the radiator. Test if the foil fits before gluing it. Make sure you put the glue on the correct side, that's the side facing the wall. What you see here is not enough glue, so make sure you'll use more. Use your hands to press down the foil against the wall as far as you can reach. For the rest, use a long brush. 
Job done! Project number six, garage door insulation. Our garage is directly attached to the main house, so it makes sense to have the garage as warm as possible to avoid faster heat loss from the house. Also, we have a bedroom above the garage and a cold garage means a cold bedroom. I checked the temperature inside the garage after a night of frost and it was very cold, nearly at freezing point. So, the tools you need are some strong tape, a pair of scissors, measuring tape, and if you have one, a staple gun will also come in handy. Make sure that at the end of your project, the strings moving the lock plugs can freely move. So start with a foil layer on the upper half, inside of the garage door frame. Cut a little cross at the bottom center of the first foil to be able to fit it around the garage door lock. Thread the foil carefully behind the metal strings. Fix the foil to the door with strong tape. Take extra care around the lock. That's one layer of insulation foil. That's one layer of insulation foil done. If you want, put a second layer on top. Make it slightly wider and fix it onto the garage door frame. I stopped with the second layer after fixing one large piece to the bottom half. Again, making sure I avoid restricting the movements of the metal cords moving the garage door locks. Close gaps between the outer wooden garage frame and the garage door with black panels provided and or use the insulation foil. A staple gun may give a better finish than sticky tape. So, in summary, you can save lots of money on your energy bills by stopping heat leaking from your home using this foil. And you are contributing an important climate action at the same time as well. Thank you. And always remember, when many small people in many small places take many small steps, they will change the face of the world forever. You can find out more about saving energy and climate action on this YouTube channel and its playlist, on my blog and by following My Zero Carbon on Facebook or Twitter. If you would like to see more videos like this, please support My Zero Carbon on Patreon or Libera Pay for a regular donation or on Ko-fi for a one-off donation. Please remember to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. My Zero Carbon. The best time to act is now.